Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be covering how to set up a project in Premiere Pro 2018. So first of all, I appreciate it if you do not and comment on me using Windows 7. Uh, that really is offensive and it really uh, triggers me. So uh, with that, let's get Premiere in front of this so you stop looking at my desktop. Okay, when Premiere Pro first starts up, they've got this new little Learn tab here that uh, shows up uh, little videos that you can watch. If you just want to skip over that, you click over to Work. And uh, once you click on that, I believe the next time you open up Premiere, it should not show that, uh, that, that Learn tab again. But you can always click on that Learn tab, tab and watch those videos. But anyway, so we're going to go on Work here. And we've got this little area here. We've got our Recent Files. If you've got your project syncing online, you've got your CC files. This is uh, this is all all my projects that are that are syncing to the Creative Cloud. And then you've got your sync settings in here. If it's not updated, you can hit sync settings now, and it will update data. If you're using if you're using somebody else's computer and you want to change the account, uh, just click on this here, and you can change it to your account. Uh, but you probably just should not break into people's homes uh, just to use their Premiere Pro. So I uh, recommend just getting your own version of it. So I'm gonna get, go to recent here. All right. So what we've got down here, I'm gonna skip over the new team project and the open team project. This is for the enterprise edition only. This is for uh, set up for a studio edition, and you'll have to get a different license for it. And I. I don't have that license either because I do a lot of freelance and the, and the studio work that I uh, am involved in. We don't use the enterprise. We haven't gotten into the enterprise edition yet. So eventually I will probably get into this and, and show how it functions. Uh, but right now let's go through this. We've got a new project and open project. If you have a project that you've opened before, you can click open project. If you've got a, a project that you've uh, created before and you need to open that project and it's not showing here in the recent files, you can just hit open and you can navigate to your project file. You can find your project, select it, and hit open, or you can just simply double click on it and it will open it from this open window here. Aside from that, let's show you how to set up a new project if this is your first time setting up a project. So let's show you how to set up a new project here. I'm going to go to new project, click on that. So it opens up a few things here. You, first of all, you've got three tabs that open up, which we're going to kind of go through. And also you've got a location and a name. The location is where it's going to save your project. Keep in mind that when you create a new project and you import media into your project, the media does not become part of your project file. Uh, PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint is one of those uh, programs that that will do do this in a certain fashion. When you add photos, media, and video to it, it adds to your project file, to your PowerPoint project file, and it gets bigger and bulkier. But the way a Premiere project file works is a little bit different. Let me go into one of my folders here and show you. I've got all of my media uh, right here. I've got all these different types of folders that I've got everything organized into media here. And then I've got my actual project files. These project files here, if you look at the size of this, I move over and look at the size of this, this isn't even one megabyte. It's a very, very small file. Basically, this file here tells all this media what to do. It tells it how to act, where to edit, what, what uh, music to mix in, and, and what levels of your audio is going to be at, and all the different information is stored on this project file. But it does not contain the media. It's important to know that because when you finish this project file, if you take that project file and email it to somebody and they open it up, it's going to say that all of your media is offline and it'll want to know where it's at. So if you send a project file to somebody, make sure that they have access to all of your media that you've shot. But just keep in mind, this is just a small project file that just tells you media what to do. It does not contain the media. So with that being said, I'm going to go up here and we're going to start a new project. First of all, it's asking where do you want to save your project? If you pull this down, it'll show recent uh, locations that you've used. Otherwise, you can hit Browse and choose a location. I'm going to go to an external hard drive here. And I'm going to right click in here and do a new folder. If you're on a Mac, this is the exact same process. You can just create a new folder. There's a little tab that'll do new folder. And I'll call this Magic Man. Chin Fat. This is a movie all about me, and uh, they, they call me Chin Fat and they call me Magic Man, so I combine them together. I'm just kidding, they don't. I wish I had magic powers, but I don't. All right, so I have chosen uh, that folder right there, and I'm going to hit Select Folder. So now it has the location where it's going to save my project file. Now I'm going to name it. I'm just going to name it Magic Man Project. So um, I, I like to name these project files projects just because it, when, when I open up a folder and I start looking, I can easily find them. That's just something I've got done for some time. Um, instead of just Magic Man, if you do project, you know it's an actual project file as soon as you see it. Pretty easy to figure out. Okay, when I hit OK, this is going to save it. But before we do, let's show these uh, three tabs here. You've got your General tab. 
your scratch disks, and your ingest settings. On your general tab, you have, first of all, your renderer. For the past several years, uh, Premiere Pro has been using has been using GPU, or video, basically graphics cards inside of uh, computers to uh, speed up the effect process and to speed up the playback process on the video. Even like exporting out the video, this will speed up the process. When you look at this renderer, if it, if it says software only, that means it's going to be very, very slow. If Premiere doesn't support your video card, it'll automatically go to software only, which it'll still run, but when you start getting into heavier files like 4K files, Files, it's going to really bog things down. So if you can use your video card, it's going to make a huge difference. So I'm going to choose this and say we're going to go for GPU acceleration. Now if this is on software only and the, uh, and the GPU is grayed out, usually what you have to do is just update your video cards. And I recommend using I recommend using GeForce Experience. GeForce Experience uh, is going to keep track of your video cards. And look at this, I've got an update here. Uh, you can download and download the new drivers and install them. Uh, but this is specifically for uh, GeForce and uh, NVIDIA uh, style of video cards. But if you keep your video card updated and then you restart Premiere, uh, that usually unlocks this. Sometimes they will have their updates, uh, read new types of video cards, and, and your video card drivers have to stay up to date. So the project we're creating here on our display format, we're going to, on the video, it's going to display your video in time code by default. If you're working in film, if you're doing, um, if you're doing transfer from film to video, uh, then it's got it measured in feet and frames. And then you can just do it in frames as well. Time code is kind of the standard way to go these days. Uh, on your audio here, you can tell it to show your audio in samples or in milliseconds. Basically, what the samples is, is that this will just match up. If you bring in us audio separate from your video or audio that's attached to your video, it'll read it in samples, which basically means for every frame of video, you have one frame of audio uh, showing. It kind of converts it to frames. Audio doesn't really work frame by frame. It really works by sampling. Uh, so if you do milliseconds, it's going to break it down into these micro, into these micro uh, samples that you can access and do uh, some very fine-tuned audio mixing. But by a standard, it's okay to have it on audio samples and continue. Uh, capture, this is kind of an ancient um, leftover item here. Unless you're capturing old DV footage or HDV footage with a camera or a capturing deck uh, via Firewire, then uh, you won't really need this. But this is, this is helpful if you're ever trying to go back and capture old tapes. And sometimes if you have like an old uh, DV camera and then you have an old VHS camera, sometimes you can plug that camera in through the DV camera, which it attaches to the computer via Firewire, which is also an ancient cable. And then you can capture that footage by playing the tape into your into Premiere Pro. Okay, on the next tab here, we have scratch disks. Under scratch disk, we have several different things. This is where it's going to be saving things to your, uh, what is called a scratch disk, or just your hard drive, basically. You're telling it which disk to sa save all this media to here. Uh, if you're capturing, once again, if you're capturing video from DV or HDV or VHS, this is where it will be saving this footage. And this just defaults to the same path as the folder where the project has been saved, which is nice and convenient. It does this for everything here. I usually don't change many of these here unless you get your project file saving on your desktop and you've got your, and you got your media on an external hard drive or a server. So you go down to video previews as you build effects and render them. It's going to save those video previews into this folder here. And you can click browse on any of these and change your location. Uh, same on audio previews. When you do audio effects, it'll save those uh, effects. It'll render those effects into a folder so it will play back quicker. Now, this is really important right here, uh, project autosave. Now, you got to kind of think about this as what if my hard drive crashed? I've got my project file saved on this hard drive right here. And right now it's going to autosave, and we'll show you how to do your autosave settings here in a second. And if your autosave files are being saved in the same folder and your hard drive died, all your backed up, backed up autosave uh, files are going to be dead. But uh, if, you're, if you're on Creative Cloud, though, as we showed you at the beginning, as long as you leave your preferences alone, it will be saving your project files up to the Creative Cloud as well. So you have three places it's backing up. You're basically where you're saving your own project file, your autosave folder, and then the Creative Cloud. So you got a backup going in three different locations. you got your backups going into two different locations and your project file in its own, own location. So you might want to save your autosave to maybe to your computer desktop to your computer uh, document folder onto your actual computer under the do under the documents or something just to have a separate location for your autosave but then you won't have those autosaves on your hard drive so you just got a decision to make and then other things if you have uh, things in your uh, creative if you purchase things or use free items from your creative cloud libraries it has a location where you want to save it you usually want to keep everything saved onto your hard drive and into your folder where your, your your project is that way when you take that hard drive and plug it into a different machine you have all your media same with motion graphic templates as well uh, you can download Download templates. You can buy them. You can uh, use the free ones, and they will say it'll download those uh, onto your hard drive. Let's go to the next tab here, which is ingest settings. Ingest settings. I usually leave this alone. I have a separate episode coming up on importing media, and I, I believe two episodes that I'm going to go over this ingest setting inside the actual software. What this does is if you check mark this, this has added this attribute to your project now, and every time you import footage, it's going to do exactly what you have these settings set up to do. 
And ingest can do a few things. It can copy your media from, say, like a solid state drive that you just shot on it from a camera plugged into the computer. It'll copy it to your computer's folder, to your computer hard drive folder or the external hard drive that you have plugged in. It'll transcode, it'll create proxies, or it will copy and create proxies. Like I said, we're going to go through this in a couple episodes. I usually don't leave this as part of the nature of my project file. I'll do this for individual media that I import. And you can do this later when you import media into your project. And over here, you got a little add ingest uh, ingest preset. If, if you are cr uh, creating proxies, you're gonna you can add an ingest preset here if the, you don't see the preset that you want for your proxies in their preset settings over here. So that being said, I'm going to hit OK, and my project file has been saved. And here we are with a brand new project, no media, all ready to begin. Okay, and one final thing I want to cover here is I've got a, uh, this this new project that I've created, uh, kind of a, a new setting in Premiere Pro that they've added in the past year. First of all, I'm going to close this project by going up to File and Close Project, and I'm going to open up a couple other projects. And one thing they've kind of changed in Premiere Pro in the past year is when you open up a, it used to be that when you opened up a project and you already had a project open, it would close that project and then it would open up the project that you just opened. But now it's a little bit different. Now you can have several projects open in the same at the same time. So if I go to File, Open Project, and I open another project here, one thing you have to be aware of is this now has both those projects open. If you keep opening projects, it's going to keep opening them up in tabs here. If you, right now I can't see, I can see my Gear Room project here, but I can't see my left hanging project. If you click on this little arrow right there, it'll show another project open. There's my other project. There's my project window for it. I'm going to click on this. I'll go down to the, uh, to the gear room project. and there. So now I have both projects open uh, at the same time. So if you don't want to have multiple projects open at the same time, you will have to kind of be aware of this and you'll want to close a project before you actually open another one. But right now I can actually go to this project. Let's go to the left hanging, which is the early project I had. You can right click on it and say close project right on the tab and say close project. It'll ask if you want to save any changes. I can say yes. I'm not going to save my changes here. I'm just going to say no because I haven't done any changes on it. Uh, but now I go to my main project window here for my new for my new project, and there we are. We've got one open. So if you do have several projects open, let me open a couple more projects. Now if I go down here, you'll notice I've got three project tabs open, three completely different projects open at the same time. If you want to close a single project, once again, you can right click and say close project, or you can go up to file and hit close project. It'll close your current project. It'll ask if you want to save any changes if you've made changes. But if you want to close all these projects and open up one and open up a separate project, I can just go to file and say close all projects. And now I can do my changes, save my changes if I need. And we're back to square one. And now I can there's my Magic Man project right there. Click on it and I can start importing media and start editing. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And in a couple more episodes, I will be doing, I'll be showing how to use that ingest setting on my import media tutorials.